Welcome. Uh, my name is uh, Gregory Farrar. I'm one of the exhibit assistants here at the Oakwood Cemetery Chapel. And today we're going to be going through our digital collection titled To Elevate. And To Elevate looks at the legacy and the history of Houston Tillotson University. Houston Tillotson University is the oldest institution of higher learning in Austin, Texas, with roots dating back to 1875. Um, HDU is also Austin's only HBCU, which is a historically black college or university. And so we're going to get right into this. So with our introduction, uh, to elevate means to raise up or to lift up to a higher position. And it actually has the Latin root elevat or elevatus, which means raised or lifted up. And as we begin this introduction, this project is actually its second iteration. The original iteration debuted at the inaugural uh, 2020 African American Genealogy Conference in February of uh, 2020. And since then, this is essentially its expansion in the second iteration, uh, which has greatly expanded upon uh, that first uh, project that we started. And so as we first kind of introduce this subject, we look at how the roots of this institution came into being. We look at the early roots of uh, Tillotson College in 1875 and the early roots of Samuel Houston College in 1876. And on a personal note, when we decided on the name to elevate, the reasoning behind it was because of the Latin origin. And one of the individuals that we highlight in this exhibit was one of the early Black classicists. And the early Black classicists were Black Americans who mastered the study of Greek and Latin, basically the classics. And so as we start off with our uh, collection, we have our introduction and we go directly into HBCU's Roots That Run Deep. And the reason why we're starting here is we wanted to introduce what an HBCU is to either people who, who don't know a whole lot about HBCUs or are completely unfamiliar with the topic. And so this was a way to introduce um, how schools such as HTU came into being. And for a lot of people, they might be unaware that for a lot of United States history, uh, Black Americans had very limited op options in terms of education. Throughout most of the time, many Black Americans only had the option to be educated in the Northern United States. And, um, and this was the case where the first HBCU was uh, the University of Oak. And this was a case, the first HBCU was Cheney University of Pennsylvania in 1837. And these schools in the North were the only options for many Black Americans to receive a higher education. And this, that would actually be the case until following the American Civil War, when finally HBCUs uh, began popping up in the American South. And HBCUs basically proved a, a, an invaluable resource and a, a pathway to um, elevate formerly enslaved African Americans and their families uh, to be educated and to find a way other than the agricultural uh, lifestyle that was normally accepted. And so as we go through the history of HBCUs, we also look at the history of HBCUs uh, here in Texas. And many people might be surprised to find out that there is actually another HBCU that was older than, than the roots of HTU. And Paul, and that school was Paul Quinn College. And Paul Quinn College actually opened here in Austin on April 4th, 1872. And people might be surprised of that because it's very soon after its inception moved to Waco, Texas. And it was in Waco, Texas for quite a while until it was finally relocated in 1990 uh, to where it currently resides in outside of Dallas, Texas. And so we go through this, this story map of 
the early kind of connections of uh, HBCUs here in, in Texas, and we highlight some of the other local HBCUs, and one of them was Prairie View A&M University. And Prairie View is uh, particularly important because um, it was actually the first state-sponsored public college for Black Americans uh, in Texas. And what's really interesting is one of the Oakwood Cemetery residents, William H. Holland, was actually the Black legislator who sponsored the bill. Um, and the, that bill would, in turn, create this industrial college for African Americans. And so one of Oakwood's very own was very, very instrumental in bringing Prairie View into existence. And another uh, Oakwood uh, resident, um, and her name was uh, Helen Marr uh, Kirby, uh, she actually sold the land where Prairie View would eventually be um, placed. And so we have these really interesting Oakwood connections uh, directly um, that talk uh, that are directly uh, correlated with HBCUs, not only just Houston Tillotson, uh, but also several others. And currently, there's still uh, roughly over 100 HBCU active HBCUs in the country, and many people uh, might know some of them, such as Howard University, Morehouse, and many others. And so they. Uh, still provide an amazing experience, and and they're not actually just limited to Black Americans. They're open for um, for anyone, and but they they offer um, a unique experience um, and a, a great environment for um, African Americans pursuing a higher education. And so that basically wraps up our uh, HBCU uh, story map. And as we go back, we'll go directly into Tillotson College. So Tillotson College, this is the oldest, the highest, or excuse me, this is the oldest institution of higher learning in Austin dating back to 1875. And so we go directly into the story map. And um, this is a great picture. This was actually one of the, the buildings that was on the original Tillotson College campus and the original Tillotson College campus is where Houston Tillotson University currently is now. And this building was, uh, was Beard Hall. It was one of the buildings. It's no longer there, but through this, this, um, this storytelling of digital exhibits, we're able to, to show some of the old buildings and a lot of the old photos and transport people back in time uh, to see how things looked uh, then versus now. And so we, we talk about Tillotson College and Tillotson College uh, was built upon uh, where HTU currently is, uh, what is uh, also known as Blue Bonnet Hill. And so this was actually purchased uh, for about, about $5,000, this perfect spot in East Austin, which I believe is the highest point um, in East Austin that kind of surveys uh, the Colorado River to the south, and then downtown Austin to the west. And so we look at the very early roots in for Tillotson College, uh, its namesake is Reverend George Jeffrey Tillotson. And he became the namesake for the amount of funds that he contributed and the amount of resources he was able to provide for some of the early construction. I think the earliest construction was actually Allen Hall. And so Allen Hall was this five-story building and it stood uh, basically near the top of Blue Bonnet Hill towards the south end of the lot. And so this building actually overlooked uh, what is today East 7th Street. And this is one of the uh, original buildings and it stood uh, well over, um, I believe almost a uh, hundred years from its from the day that it was, um, excuse me, I'll go back, um, let's see. And so Allen Hall actually stood, I believe until the early uh, 1950s or 1960s. And so I had a long history of serving um, the Tillotson College campus and its students and faculty. And so we break things down. We have this quote from uh, AF Beard and he is uh, the namesake of Beard Hall. 
And so that first building that we first uh, looked at, that was uh, the building that they named after him. And this is an early um, photograph of what the college campus actually looked like. So we have Beard Hall here on the left. We have uh, Allen Hall here in the center. And this was one of the caretakers uh, cabins or homes. And another, actually, another early building, and I believe this was the, the third main building that was constructed, was Evans Industrial Building. And Evans Industrial Building is actually still on the Houston Tillotson College campus. It's actually the oldest surviving structure on, on the current campus right now. And so this building is still here. And the interesting thing about the Evans Industrial Building is that students who were partake, participating in um, getting their industrial education actually created uh, the bricks for the administration building. And the administration building is the second oldest building on the current Houston Tillotson, uh, on the current Houston Tillotson University campus. And it actually under, underwent um, a renovation more recently yeah, but so this building, the bricks of this building were actually constructed in the, from the Evans Industrial Hall uh, by college students. And so we break down kind of uh, um, the administration building, which has served obviously for the administration, but has been a critical piece on the campus uh, since the Tillotson College days. And so as the years continue, we look at all the different administration and administrations that helped uh, push the college uh, forward, particularly uh, during the Mary E. Branch administration. And when Mary E. Branch became the president of Tillotson College, the college was in um, financial trouble. It was struggling. There was a lot of stuff that needed to be done. And so the college was actually uh, recognized as a junior college in 1925 and the following 26, uh, the following year in 1926, uh, Tillotson College actually functioned as a women's college uh, through 1935 until it became a co-educational again. And um, so during this period that Mary E. Branch was president, um, she actually improved things so much that the college was granted an A rating by the Southern Association of Colleges. So she was responsible, responsible for this massive uh, change in not only the college's uh, finances, but also um, the performance of the students and overall um, rating of the college. And so here we actually have a chance to see, look back in time. And so this is this is actually East 7th Street. And so here's Blue Bonnet Hill. We see Allen Hall um, and we see Evans uh, Industrial Building right here. And this was taken around 1950. And this was towards the end of, of the life of Allen Hall. As you see, it's, it's missing one of its towers right there. And we see an older, older photo before it was a, a demolition, um, I believe in the 1950s or 1960s. And so that basically concludes the era of Tillotson College and we go directly into Samuel Houston College. And so Samuel Houston College is a very interesting history. Um, and that kind of starts with the name. So Samuel Houston College, you know, where does that come from? So um, there was actually a farmer from Iowa and his name was, was Samuel Huston. And he actually, in his will, actually donated a parcel of land for the school and the school was able to um, to sell it in order to basically reopen um, but so before we get to that point we look at the early roots of um, Samuel Houston College which actually date back to 1876 and date back to um, this reverend right here Reverend George Richardson and George Richardson was a white chaplain during the American Civil War, and he was actually stationed within a black regiment. And so he, um, during the Civil War, he spent a lot of time talking and, and learning and, and, and being around black Americans that when he, when the Civil War was over, he actually moved himself and his family to Texas in order to open up a school for formerly enslaved 
uh, Americans and their children. And so he arrived in Texas and originally he actually, um, he actually began to, uh, he actually first moved to Dallas. And so from Dallas, he actually uh, started uh, working with a black pastor there, Reverend Jeremiah Webster. And they actually opened a one room, one room school in Dallas, Texas. Um, unfortunately, this school was targeted by the, by the essentially the KKK and they actually burned the school to the ground. Despite this uh, act of terrorism, they actually were able to rebuild the school. And unfortunately, the city of Dallas actually stepped in there and they actually created uh, an examination process for the teachers that was essentially made to be impassable so that none of the teachers could be certified and that essentially the school would, would never be able to open. And so following this huge disappointment, um, Reverend Richardson actually moved to Austin and he um, began his school once again in Austin. And this was in, in, in essentially 1876. And so beginning this, this school that was being run by um, Reverend Richardson was um, actually in, in the old, one of the old church buildings of uh, Charles Gillette, who was um, an Episcopal um, priest, actually during the, the era of the Civil War. And Charles Gillette actually um, had to flee Texas because he refused to uh, pray for the victory of the Confederate Army. And so he actually left Texas and actually never came back. And, and his house was um, left, um, left empty. And so Reverend Richardson um, thought this was a perfect place to um, house a school, and he was able to gain permission from his family to use um, Charles Gillette's former house uh, for this purpose. And so from there, we see this, this, um, this number of years where Richardson and his family are running the school, and eventually they uh, come into contact with uh, the secretary of the Freedmen's Aid Society, of the Methodist Church, and um, they're able to to work with them, and um, and this is actually the time where the Freedmen's Aid Society tells them about uh, Sam Huston, the farmer, and how he donated land. And what ends up actually happening happening is that Samuel Huston, the farmer, actually dies, and he actually um, in his will. It actually takes 10 years for the Freedmen's Aid Society to actually come into possession of the land that he had given to them. And so we see a lot of closures in the 1880s and the 1890s. And um, as the school bounced around from location to location, we see the location of, of Charles, Charles Gillette's uh, former house. And then we also see, um, it was actually housed at one point, the original location of the Wesley Methodist uh, Church. And originally, um, the Methodist Church was actually at the corner of uh, 9th Street and, uh, and Natchez. And of course, uh, Wesley Methodist uh, Church is actually now on, on the east side in East Austin. Um, but originally, um, the, the school was actually housed there as well. And so, the naming of the school didn't actually happen until the school officially opened in 1900 uh, before uh, being named Samuel Houston College. It also ran under the, under the names of uh, Andrews Normal School and also the West Texas uh, Conference School. And so finally, after, after uh, many years, the school officially opens. And so we, we look at what happens in 1900. So in 1900, um, the African American Methodist Episcopal Church and the Freedmen's Aid Society um, send uh, Dr. Reuben Shannon Lovingood to officially open the school. And when uh, Dr. Lovingood, his wife and his son arrived on campus, they were actually met with just one, um, one building which had just been finished on the outside, but on the inside was actually completely unfinished. And so on the first day, um, they ended up, Dr. Lovingood and his wife ended up enrolling 
uh, roughly, I believe it was um, roughly 80 students. And, uh, and they had their work um, greatly, um, their work was greatly cut out for them because they had not only had to uh, teach and house these students, they also had to finish building um, the school and, and, the, and the one building that had just been uh, finished just, just a couple of years prior. And so we look at this whole process of how when, when R.S. Lovingood uh, came into the picture and, and it's just an, an amazing story of how we see, you know, the idea of, 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 of getting a new job and finding out there's a lot more to it than you realize. And so we found, uh, and it's quoted, we found only four rooms completed, birds nestled in the rafters and pigs and goats uh, slept in the basement below. We had no kitchen, no dining hall, no dishes, no furniture. Without knowing the conditions, students rushed in upon us to board in the building. We enrolled 83 the first day, and of those 41 came to board with us. The students sat on trunks while I gave them a lecture and went out to big chairs, dishes, beds, etc. We called upon the neighbors, both white and black, all responded liberally. Our first meal was a jug of molasses and 14 loaves of bread. So just right there, you're able to see kind of the conditions and, and what, what was the beginnings of Samuel Houston College. And throughout the time, uh, Samuel Houston College was originally located um, um, essentially right where um, Interstate 35 is today. So it was right at the doorstep of East Avenue and, and East Avenue was the original uh, street, which essentially separated East and West Austin. Um, and this uh, East Avenue would eventually become as it is today, Interstate 35. But as we can see, this is a college campus over here. And some of the, the, the issues um, that happened was that, you know, there were other uh, local uh, white schools um, in the neighborhood. And a lot of times um, it was very hard for some of the black students at Samuel Houston College to go to and fro. And, and there was um, things that happened, sometimes racist things that uh, made it very difficult um, and very uncomfortable for a lot of the black students at Samuel Houston College. And because of this, um, President Lovingood actually uh, had to call a, a faculty meeting. And from there, he had to be extremely strict with his students. And he said that, you know, we have to, we essentially have, have to um, lead by example. We have to make sure that that we're not doing anything that's antagonizing anybody else and we have to lead by his example and essentially he called upon his students to to be the the most upright citizens and to to reflect the the school and themselves um and he he needed to do this in order to make sure that um that other neighbors and so forth would wouldn't harass the students and wouldn't harass the school um, and so throughout this time period um, rs lovingood he remained the president until he died in 1916 and throughout this time period we see a huge uh, growth in the, in the college campus not only in buildings but then also um, in students uh, we look at the legendary athletics of samuel houston college throughout the years um, particularly um, in the early in the 1940s, when Jackie Robinson was the basketball coach uh, under the administration of President Carl Everett Downs, and that's one of the kind of hidden histories of uh, of Austin right there. That before Jackie Robinson uh, broke the color barrier in Major League Baseball uh, for a season, he was the basketball coach here in Austin, Texas, at Samuel Houston College. And then we go into the, into the later years. And so we see this, this stretch of land and this is actually East Avenue. And this is where I-35 currently is right now. So you're able to see um, what, how things used to look like. And we see the college campus with uh, Loving Good Hall here, uh, Burroughs Hall here and the Eliza D Hall for Girls right here. And even we get a chance to see um, what the campus view looked like looking towards 
downtown Austin. As you can see, you see the state capitol building, which is uh, at this time in, in 1947 was still the tallest building. And so it really shows you um, the difference in what Austin looked like in, uh, in the late 40s. And so essentially we get up to 1952. And what happens in 1952 is that um, both Tilton College and Samuel Houston College agree to merge and form one united uh, university uh, with a common goal. And so Houston Tilton College um, essentially becomes a school that, that comes out of that merger. And with the motto of in union strength, it was a way to uh, strengthen these two institutions missions with a combined focus. Um, and especially since they were so close, they had already been so close uh, together geographically, but also um, many of the faculty knew each other and, um, and it was, uh, it was a, um, a much needed uh, boost to make sure that both institutions would survive in the long run. And so October 24th, 1952, Samuel Houston College and Tillotson College officially merged to form Houston Tillotson College. And so in this section, we look at all the Charter Day uh, activities. We actually have the original recording that you can listen to. And here we have uh, actually the three presidents. So we had um, Dr. Matthew S. Davidge right here in the center, and he became the interim president for Houston Tillotson College. Um, and then we have uh, Dr. William H. Jones, who was the, the final president of Tillotson College. And then we also have uh, Dr. Robert F. Harrington, who was the final president for Samuel Houston College. And so we have this photo here from the Houston Tillotson archives titled The Three Presidents um, with Matthew Davidge leading um, into the new merged institution. And so we break things down and we explain how things progress throughout the years and even have photos such as this as another uh, rare Austin uh, snowstorm in the 1960s. And we go further, we talk about how a lot of the original buildings of the, the Tillotson College campus either remained or were replaced. And so we have the old administration building still here in the Evans Industrial Hall building. And then also we see new buildings. We see the Downstones uh, Library uh, built in 1963. We see now the, the focal point of the Houston Tillotson University campus, which is the King Seabrook Chapel. And this is a chapel that stands roughly where Allen Hall originally was. And this is a, this is a building to, that you can see as you drive by on East 7th Street. And so we go a little bit deeper and we look at, you know, the college and community activism and campus life and student life. And from there, we actually transition into the modern day Houston Tillotson University. And this story map was created to talk about a lot of the more modern things that are happening, some of the changes in the, um, in the campus. But here we have essentially the focal point um, of the front of the campus as you see up on Blue Bonnet Hill with the Houston Tillotson University sign in the King Seabrook Chapel in the background. And we go a little bit further and we talk about, you know, the current setup of the campus. And we have several videos that talk about um, that are actually from Houston Tillotson University to give just a little bit of an idea of what it's like being a student there. Um, a lot of videos on some of the uh, celebration and the honors that the university has received. And then um, a lot of the projects and initiatives. And so we talk about the old administration building and how actually more recently it was renovated. Um, and so we go through some of the building renovations, the building, the interior renovation of the Downs Jones Library. Um, and then also uh, a, a, one of the newest um, buildings, which is actually the Sandra Joy Anderson Community Health and Wellness Center. And this actually is a focal point of helping to make sure that communities such as uh, East Austin have adequate um, uh, physical and mental health facilities. So this is one of the newest buildings on the campus. 
And we also talk about some of the other initiatives that the college has been working on, including the Building Green Justice Forum, which focuses on um, focuses on essentially different ways that that the world can um, create environmental equity and equality, um, how it can cultivate food justice, race, health, and environment, and many other things. And we also talk about the preservation currently. And as of 2020, um, the Historic Preservation Office for the city of Austin actually applied to create the des designation of the Houston Tillotson Historical District. And so that was actually um, just submitted in December of 2020, and it establishes this district um, outlining the, on the college campus. And uh, a part of that is to not only preserve the buildings um, on the campus, but it helps to gain recognition uh, for the university for the future to come, uh, highlighting its uh, historical significance. And so from here, uh, we basically wrap up um, our HTU um, story map. And from there, we actually have several others. This is a, a, a decent sized collection. And we actually break things down um, and we actually go into, uh, um, we actually highlight all the presidents of all eras. So we look at the presidents of uh, Tillotson College, Samuel Houston College, Houston Tillotson College, and the modern day Houston Tillotson University. And we actually uh, break things down and give short bios on many, um, as many people as we can. And part of the, um, the process of, of creating this section was for many people, many of these presidents, um, you, find, you find a lot, but some you really, really have to um, do your research. And so it was actually a, a really interesting process just trying to find um, information and research on some of those presidents. And so from the presidents, we also have a section that looks at the Houston Tillotson, fa uh, Houston Tillotson faculty, and that spans through all eras of the school. And we've just highlighted just a, a few people, I believe a little bit over uh, 10 or 15 for now. And the great thing about um, these digital exhibits is that you can actually add on to them as time goes on. So a lot of these will probably expand um, into the future. And from there, we look at the Houston Tillotson alumni. And we currently have uh, three separate uh, story maps um, just because we decided to highlight so many. And so we, we, we have things alphabetized and, and broken down. So we have volume one, which is last names A through G, uh, volume two, which is last names H through M, and volume three, which is last names N through Z. And from there, we actually look at uh, the actual individual story maps that we've created. And so we've created an individual story map for Dr. Ruben Shannon Lovingood. Uh, Dr. Mary Elizabeth Branch, Reverend Dr. Carl Everett Downs, Dr. Lieutenant General John Quill Taylor King Sr., Dr. John Jarvis J.J. Seabrook, Dr. Connie Yearwood Connor, and John Mason Brewer. And so this uh, in collection has over has essentially 20 individual story maps, and it's just a ton of research. Um, information and a lot of history that um, for a lot of people hasn't been known. And so we're able to kind of talk about these really important individuals. We talk about um, the presidents, we talk about the faculty, alumni, but in reality, we, and the most important is we preserve the history of what is the legacy of Houston Tillotson. And the most important thing is that we're able to create this central document so that, that anybody can learn about HTU um, and that all of these um, errors are preserved and are documented. And so we're able to use this as not only a teaching point, but also a preservation um, mission to talk about some of the old um, places uh, that make Austin uh, what it is. And to find out more, you can actually uh, find this to elevate collection on uh, the Oakwood Cemetery Chapel's website. And you can read all these uh, story maps 
and discover more about these in individuals and learn more about the enduring legacy of Houston Tillotson University. Thanks a lot.